the previous year, some of this stuff is just going to be common sense. I mean, we all went through it. We all know what we were going through. And man, we are all still standing here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We may need to praise God just for that right now, right? I mean, we need to praise God that we made it through 2020. You know, COVID-19 obviously changed everything. It was a catalytic type world event that affected everything everywhere. Every church was affected. Every home was affected. Every government was affected. Every business was affected, right? It was something that left nothing unscathed. It was a pandemic that hopefully is a once-in-a-lifetime event in our generation. Hallelujah, right? I don't want to repeat performance of that one. I don't know about you, but I'll let that one stay in the past. Some would even call it a black swan type of event, an event that comes onto the scene out of nowhere that changes everything, right? True to their colors, demonic world leaders' motto, never let a crisis go to waste. They seized on the day in so many moments as well in 2020, sadly resulting in the division of more people than the uniting of more people. That means we as a church have a great opportunity before us to continue to be a group of people who would unite rather than divide. Can I get an amen for that? So at Journey Church, we started out like most churches with great hope and real optimism. We had great plans as I stood here one year ago this weekend. We were going to see people get saved. We were going to develop leaders, and we were going to see our city transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation. We laid out those glorious plans, and they were redirected in Jesus' name. It wasn't that they weren't many times fulfilled, but they certainly look quite different than what we were envisioning as success as we started out the beginning of the year. So if you roll back the clocks into March, can you believe it? Doesn't it seem like eons and decades ago? But if you roll back the clock to March, it's crazy that it was nine months ago. Um, everything began to change. The lockdowns came onto the scene. Businesses and churches were shuttered. The government unleashed unprecedented rounds of financial stimulus. I mean, money printing, um, financial stimulus. Not long after... Um, man, did our nation experience great trauma through the racial division that came up over the circumstances that occurred. Man, it was a terrible time for our brothers and sisters in color. It revealed long-standing injustices in our nation that still have a lot of work to be corrected. And man, could we be a part of that solution? Come on, Jesus. Give an amen for that as well. God does not look in the color of our skin. And man, I am so grateful that we serve in a diverse church where we can love one another and kind of continue to set an example for those around us. We also had this little thing called the 2020 election cycle that just nothing happened as a result of that, did it? I mean, there was no fighting going on on Facebook. Nobody hated each other over the politics. Why are you all laughing at that, right? I mean, was that not like the craziest? It's still going on. It hasn't ended yet. Come on, Lord, would you help us already, right? Um, it was a crazy election cycle. So it was almost like the devil was working like quadruple overtime during the course of 2020, right? It wasn't just the pandemic. It was racial injustice. And then you combine that with politics and you magnify all of those things with economics at the same time. And it was like a perfect nuclear storm. What do they call that new winter thing? The bomb cyclone or something like the bomb cyclone went off over the entire world and it changed everything. And I think we're all still trying to figure out what it means to adapt and what life looks like in this new world that we find ourselves living in. There's aspects of it that maybe we really like and there's other aspects that I personally fear like, will you ever travel again in a normal way? I don't know what the, the future is going to look like. So there's so many unknowns as we step in to the next stages of what life might look like. While many of us joke coronavirus is going to go away on November 4th, the second after the election ended, you know, I think there were some of us that, that kind of joked about that from time to time. Well, certainly that did not take place, right? In fact, some of the worst fears of what they said about coronavirus increasing actually began to occur, occur in our region, obviously causing us most recently to even shut down the church for a couple of weeks as we continue to regroup and figure out where things were at in our own region because of the number of cases that we kept hearing about of all our friends and loved ones in our region. And I think we use great wisdom in that, and we need to continue to use great wisdom as we move forward. Amen? both to those of us in person and online, man. We got a lot of work to do. And as you can see from attendance today, it's like regrouping. I feel like we're right back in May again, but come on, God's got a plan. He is in control. He is in charge. And I'm telling you, he is gonna ultimately 
get all the victory. You know, few of us over this past year were spared um, either contracting coronavirus or having a friend or loved one or coworker get infected. And sadly, me, maybe even in, uh, many of us have lost loved ones as a result of it as well. It is no joke. It's nothing to be taken lightly. I don't care if the politicians overdo it in various ways, shapes, or forms or not. It is certainly real, and we shouldn't take it lightly. We should love one another, love our brothers and sisters as well, and um, know that God is still in control. Sadly, I would repeat that rather than uniting people during this season through these challenges, it seemed like it created more division in our country than ever before, right? Everybody became an expert on everything, and, ra and rather than using um, Facebook and other social media for the social good, it seemed like that place where war was going on, a war of words between people, and many believers were dragged into that as well, right? As we confronted these various social issues that were out there, the church you had hoped would be amongst the most united, but rather than being united, it became one of the most divided groups of people on the planet. I pray that as 2021 moves forward, that that would certainly change, right? That we would unite around the common cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we would love one another and care for one another and be there for one another. Even if our views diverge on certain social issues, um, they shouldn't diverge as it comes to the fact that we are believers in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. we got to stick together. Friends were divided. Family members were divided. Churches were divided. Lord, could we be part of the change? Could we be part of the solution? Can I tell you that in the midst of all those challenges, God was so good to journey. God's face shined upon us and some amazing things happened. And I'd like to recount a few of those as we move forward. First and foremost, a lot of people did end up getting saved and a lot of people did end up getting baptized during the course of 2020. I mean... That last baptism that we did here in December, it was December, and we were baptizing people. There was young people. There was older people. There was people who had just lost loved ones that were there and getting baptized. It was an amazing and beautiful thing to watch, and I, for one, am believing for more of that, you know, because as the things get darker out there, people are going to search for the light. They need the truth, and as Mary Jo and I were driving in this, this morning, she's like, you know how I would define what a lot of 2021 has to be for Journey Church? We need to be a people who speak the truth in a world of lies, in a world where you have fake news and fake finances and fake politics and fake everything. We need to be a people who lovingly speak the truth to those around us because there are those who are seeking the truth, right? Right? And man, could we be a people that would help provide that in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. We got to see many, many people get saved. Um, it forced us to make some changes in how we do ministry, hopefully mostly for the good, um, but also for ways that are just quite different. Like we always thought of our digital ministry as an add-on, right? We always thought of the ability to um, watch online. Hey, you're sick. And you could go watch online for that particular weekend before you come back. Or, hey, you could be in the pajama ministry that particular week, right? Whatever it might be. Or you're on vacation and you could still be a part of the family. Now what we've seen is the digital ministry is more important than ever. It is integral to who we are. Um, there are many people that are in those perfect quadrants of at risk for COVID. And until this goes away, um, we embrace you. We thank you. We appreciate those of you who are watching online. Thank you to the many, many, many people who are watching online. Uh, we invested in new cameras and new technology to help us better deliver that. If you look at the quality of what we are producing, it is certainly a lot better than it was a year ago. And we need to continue to invest in those ministries. I think it's part of the future. All of us have, uh, you know, gone to, you know, it, it, you think of the bigger society. Things have changed, like distance learning is now the thing. I mean, we thought that that was going to happen over time, that more and more people would take advantage of online schooling and other things of that nature. Now it's like everywhere, and even in our younger ages, which I don't know if it's good. I think it'd probably be better for them to be socialized and around other people to a greater degree. So some of these are going to have benefits, and some of them are going to have disadvantages. But the world has certainly changed in that regard. I mean, how many of you used to enjoy going to a movie theater back in the day? Did anybody like going to the movie theater? Even with that $10 popcorn, I like going to the movie theater. I don't know why, right? So now we just pop like $1.50 popcorn at our house, right? And many of us have invested in our home theaters to take them to the next level. I mean, I can't believe we don't even go to the movies anymore, right? 
How much changed during this year? Lord, would you help us through those? So we're adapting to this new digital world that we find ourselves in. As the year was progressing, God, uh, uh, God began to stir this thing in our hearts about revival and about prayer and about seeking him through fasting. And man, you could see just like today, it was so good to be gathered together with the worship team again. Didn't they bring it this morning? It was wonderful. And you could feel this intensity as the year was going on. And it was like, I can't believe we have to stop this gathering together. Lord, get us back together because we do value the gathering together of the saints. But there was this intensity that was building in worship that I believe God wants to renew and that we're going to continue to experience. It's going to last not just in 2020, but push us into 2021. When we reopened our building the last time, um, we opened up and we had a Thursday night prayer meeting every single month during that month that we reopened. So we did that every single Thursday night during that particular month. And guess what? As we reopen now, the beginning of January, every single Thursday night during the month of January, we're going to be doing a praise and worship and prayer service right here in person and online. I would encourage you to be here on Thursday nights as we go deeper. I'll talk more about that as we move from review to where we're going in the days ahead. Um, it does seem, you know, we did the entire book of Romans in 2020. Do you believe, we did, I mean, doesn't that seem like decades ago? I mean, last year at this time we gave out those Romans guides that we began to study together. We did the entire book of Romans and studied it together during the course of 2020 and then ended out the, the year with that series called Epic that we did and we investigated many revivals and many moves of God where he touched the heart of an individual or a group of people and amazing things ended up happening. And I hope you benefited from those. If you missed them, go back on our app or on our website and feel free to review any of those. We reopened a refurbished kids church. Anybody still have kids in here? You guys got kids? Second service has a lot of kids. Like five of you have kids in here? What's wrong with you people? There was a baby boom at the end of the year at Journey Church, too, I would say, last year. Maybe, when was it, nine months ago? I'm shocked there's not going to be like a whole bunch of babies that we're going to have pretty soon here at Journey Church after those lockdowns. Um, but, you know, we used the lockdowns to make a monumental shift inside of our kids' church and totally revamp everything back there. And amazingly, God even gave us the resources financially to do that, right? And then we reopened Kids Church, and many of you stepped up to the plate in serving the next generation. Give yourselves a round of applause. That is amazing. And we're going to continue that. And I want to encourage you, if there's one place that you could serve, I would encourage you to go serve in the next generation. Um, yes, we do love it when we have an abundance of people waiting on people at doors and guest services. We love it when every other area of ministry is full. But there's something so important in this day and age in sowing into the lives of the next generation, ensuring that the gospel is passed from one generation to the next. It's vitally important. And if you're starting off this new year, you're looking to plug in, you're looking to go deeper, I would encourage you to get with Annalise and her team. Just stop by there near that welcome desk. I'm sure they will tell you how you could plug in and get involved in what God is doing with those kids at Journey Church. In terms of attendance, it was another huge shift, not just for our church, but one that all churches are having to navigate as a result of COVID. We, like most churches, were crushed in terms of physical attendance as compared to where we were, right? You could see it even today, right? As people still have fear surrounding it, many rightly so. But we got to go on living. The Bible tells us that you cannot forsake the gathering together of the saints. And there's some stuff that just can't happen virtually, I believe. As much as I love computers, as much as I love the digital world that we live in, man, there's this beauty that happens when you gather together and worship with other believers. So we need to try to do so safely and open up the doors and allow God to move. And uh, if you're of any high-risk group, that's why we obviously encourage, you know, please stay home. Please take advantage of those digital ministries until we're at that place where we can all gather together safely. So we do realize the world has changed in that. But when we reopened, we did so with about a third of those in previous attendance. That number grew to about 60% of what we once were in terms of our physical attendance. And um, many people are choosing still to watch digitally. That's why we continue to invest in that. And we love everybody, whether they're here or whether you're worshiping with us online. But sadly, also for many, not just at Journey, but I've heard from talking to many other pastors, um, 2020 was a huge year of drift for many casual believers, I would say. Um, many just disappeared. So if initially a third came back, a third watched online, there was a third of people that just disappeared. 
That's not something we can accept as a body of believers. Hey, we got through this. We're two-thirds of what we used to be. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have you ever rejoiced over that? No, it says the kingdom of God should be on an advance, right? That we should be advancing, that we can continue to reach people. Um, we just need to learn how to do so in different ways. That's part of what we're going to be learning in 2021. How do we reach people in different ways? Some of the things that we used to use are not going to work anymore. We can't go on doing what we used to do if we continue to do it and it wasn't working. That's called insanity if we repeat those things over and over. There's some things that have changed forevermore as a result of what happened that year. Let's talk about our finances. You know, last year we stood on this stage this particular month and we gave a $100,000 check to Mercy Support Services as a seed offering. All right. They were believing for a building that they could buy on College Drive that would ultimately run all of their services. And then in addition to running their services that they offer that one day would offer housing for people. Do you know that I had a personal conversation with another lady that said God put it on her heart after seeing what we did and he told her to follow our example and she not only put up a hundred thousand she put up 1.1 million dollars and ended up buying that building outright for them so our act of faith spurred someone else to go do it and now that building has been running there for months they're offering all their services out of there they're doing so absolutely debt free and they're planning for phase two. I'm sure we'll get to meet them throughout the course of the year as they talk about where they're at and getting ready to build those apartments for people. So, man, God used that offering as a catalytic moment to be able to provide for families in need in perpetuity. That's a beautiful, wonderful thing. You know, in spite of all the changes and attendance drops and drift, you know, God still allowed us as a church to bring in over $1 million in our budget. Can you give God a little glory for that, right? We went ahead, in addition to the 100000 we gave, we gave away over $100,000 more to other ministries in need as well. Come on, you got us, got to applaud. And you would think as we approached the end of the year, we'd be broke, busted, and disgusted, would you not? After all that we witnessed, wouldn't you think so? By the way, we did not take PPE money either. We refused to take the government money from that. And guess what? We closed out the year, and we still had over $25,000 positive cash flow somehow at the end of the year. After all those obligations, we still came out and were able to actually save $25,000 after making all those expenses, after giving away all that money. Give God a little bit of glory. He is a great sustainer. He sustained us. Man, God is good. So as we move from last year into what lies ahead could we give God a little bit of glory one more time for all that he did? God is so good. People got saved. People got delivered. People got set free. He sustained us through this madness. And the financial part, I think we're debt free. God is good. Hallelujah, Jesus. He blesses it. He's good. He honors our giving, as Ashley said earlier, too. You give, and man, he will take care of all your needs. Not all your wants, but all of your needs. So as we enter into 2021... Is it going to be the most amazing, wonderful, awesome year for everyone involved? Come on, Jesus. I pray it is, don't you? I mean, come on, Lord, right? That would be awesome. I pray that it is. I pray your 2021 is 10 times better than your 2020. Hallelujah. I do pray that, right? But guess what? No matter what 2021 brings, because maybe that ain't going to happen, right? We stood on the stage last year and we're like, it's going to be dope. And then it was like, it's some challenges, right? So it may not be, right? It may not be the year that we expected. But guess what? God is still in control and God loves you. He will sustain you. He will cause you to prosper in the midst of when everything around you looks like it's falling apart. God can still cause you to prosper. And I'm not talking about money. Could it get worse? Yes, it could get worse. In fact, if you read to the end of the book of Revelation, it gets worse before it gets better. I've taught you that before, right? It could very well get worse. This begs the question, though, what should we as a church do? And more importantly is what is God calling us to do? So we spent much time starting in October as a staff and with some of our leaders and praying and fasting and asking God for direction. And I want to share some of those things with you that I believe we have come to the conclusion of, of where God wants us to be as we move forward and start with some maybe lessons learned and how we could apply those and how it moves forward for us. So first and foremost, I want to say our vision has not changed. 
Our hope is to see the city of Jacksonville transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God and our generation. That is our vision. That is our hope. That is what we're desiring to see. We want to see God transform this city. We want to see revival in our city. We want to be a part of that revival. We want to be difference makers. We want to be used by God. I prayed earlier, man, I don't want to go and try to create something and see if God would bless it. I want to be looking for where God is at work and go there and know that we'll be in his blessing, right? See, sometimes even in our own personal lives, we try to go create something and it's not always of God, right? Then we get burned out and things don't go the way that we want. It's much better to ask God, where do you want us to go? What do you want us to do? We want to be in your will and then flow in that. So that is our desire as we're kicking off this new year. Our vision has not changed, right? I still believe that goal is city transformation. I think he wants us to be part of that journey. It's the gospel that transforms lives. We've learned even more than ever, it's not buildings that transform lives. It's not church programs that change lives. It's not great communicators that change lives. It's the power of God through the Holy Spirit that changes lives. And at least Ashley's fired up about that. Hallelujah. Every life changed is for God's glory, not for ours, right? We don't want to grow so that we can get the glory. We want to grow so that God would get the glory. And whenever I share that, I always talk about that in our generation part. We have a job to do, a role to play. Those of you who are here in person and those of you who are online, Christianity is not a spectator sport. It's not a time to sit back. It's our job to pray. It's our job to preach. It's our job to share. It's our job to open up our homes to small groups so that others can come to know them. It's our job to go out and evangelize and share the good news of the gospel with our friends, with our loved ones, with our neighbors, with our enemies. Whatever opportunity we have, we need to be ready in season and out of season to go share the good news of the gospel. At Journey Church, if you are here and you're trying to make that decision, whether you affirm or reaffirm your desire to move forward with us, I'm here to tell you, you are not here to be a spectator. If you want to go spectate, go to another church. If you want to be a spectator, go to another church. This is not going to be the church for you. Cultural Christianity needs to die. Consumer church shopping Christianity needs to die. Passive Christianity needs to die. Lukewarm Christianity needs to die. In fact, if you're lukewarm, don't get mad at me, but listen to what God says. Revelations 3.15, I know your works. You are neither hot nor cold. What you would, you were either hot nor, what am I reading? That you're not either hot or cold. So because you are lukewarm and not hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You know, I, I got sick and canceled that last service because there was a couple other people that were sick. But one of the main symptoms that I had is I woke up at 2 in the morning and I was throwing up violently. And that is not pleasant. How many of y'all have ever had that happen, right? Some of you drank too much and that happened the next day. That's not what I'm talking about. That was bad too, right? That used to happen to me, but it don't know more. Hallelujah, Jesus, right? I was violently ill. And that's, that's kind of the picture that God is giving us here. He said, I'd rather you be hot and on fire for me, or if you're cold, but if you're straddling the fence, if you're walking the middle, if you're playing this Christian game, then guess what? He's going to violently throw you up. That's the, the reaction that he's kind of describing there. So if you haven't seen, the dark's got a little bit darker, <laughs> right? The light needs to get a little bit lighter. We can't play church anymore. There's no room. There's no space for that. Church has changed forevermore, and I'm using that word kind of corporately, not the building, but the church. We are the church. All of us are the church. This is the season to be on fire. Maybe that one needs to be our life verse for the year. Nobody wants to read that one every single day, right? But maybe we need to. Am I lukewarm? Am I on fire? Where am I at, God? So another lesson learned, really a reaffirmation. Church is about the people and not about the buildings. Church is about the people and not about the buildings. Buildings can facilitate or they can constrain a ministry. Hebrews 10, 24, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What's the day? The last days, the day of Jesus' return, right? He says, do not forsake the gathering together of the saints. Now, I do realize that that is different in our generation. There's an in-person component to that. There's an online component to that. But man, there's something important is what he's saying here. 
in that getting together, be it in person, be it online, be it one-on-one, be it in a small group, but when you neglect the gathering together, and I think that's something we saw. I mean, I think, J- I think Jason even told me that one time when he, he was here, when he came back, like, he said, Eric, you know, it was, it's hard to get back in the flow of church. Like, when, they, when you miss because everything was closed down, and then now you're trying to get back in, you know, that's how the devil works. He changes your routine, and he shuffles you up, and he gets you off of where you're supposed to be. And then when you're trying to get back on track, it's incredibly difficult to do so. So God gives us these words, and he tells us, like, stay connected with your brothers and sisters. You know, I saw some, like, super creative one. I don't know if the Bryants were facilitating it, but you guys had that trivia night online the other night. I mean, that was amazing to see all of you guys. Even Narita's husband was joining you guys from Japan who had been there. That's creating community in a creative way using Zoom where they were all together in one place having fun. My kids were next door in their house, and I see their pictures of them on there. So in this day and age, we're certainly going to have to be creative about how to live out that verse, but it's something that we need to value. Don't let yourself get disconnected because when you're that lone sheep that's out there by yourself, you are the perfect target for the devil to try to take out. You're that perfect target, so make sure you emphasize that during this coming year. The building is not the church. So what does that mean for us in 2021 and beyond? I see four primary things that we need to focus on in there, and I am running late. I apologize, but we're going to get through this. We're going to continue to leverage this building to the fullest extent possible while God allows us, right? He's helped us pay the bill every single month. I'm praying that he'll continue to do so. But digital gathering is becoming more important in every area of life. So we need to continue to build on that ministry. If you've got skills and a heart in that area, we'd love for you to be a part of that team. We need to continue to increase our social media presence, our online presence, our journey university experiences for learning, discipling, and growing people. So we're going to continue to invest heavily in those experiences during the course of this year. Small groups are vital. For some reason, people are comfortable going to a small group setting when they might not be comfortable going to a larger group setting. Part of the math don't work out for that for, to me, just being completely honest with you. If you have 10 groups of 10 people versus one group of 100 people, come on, Jesus. It all seems like it's still the same thing. A lot of this stuff don't make sense, does it? I mean, like, i just still grasping to, to, to go around it. But, hey, small groups are vital to the next stages of who we are. So we're going to be doing our next small group um, leader training on January 24th, Sunday after church. If you are interested in becoming a new small group leader, please be in attendance that day. We'll be releasing all of our new small groups the weekend after Super Bowl weekend, February 11th. All small groups will start. Outreach is vitally important. It's an imperative. We need to continue to train up and equip one another to share the gospel with everyone as we encou- everyone we encounter putting a renewed emphasis on evangelism this year. Can I get one more amen on that? I want to quickly go through this next part, but um, talking about the building one final time and about lockdowns and about finances, um, I said buildings can either constrain or facilitate ministry, right? So we want to facilitate it as much as we can. Right now, this building is about 25% of Journey Church's budget. We do not own the building. We rent this particular building, and it takes up 25%. Could you imagine what it would be like to not have to pay that 25% every month? The additional ministry that we could do, the freedom that we would have, the the, uh, fear over our minds of being able to pay those bills when they come due all the time, right? So one of the things that we need to do now more is an imperative than ever. We were going to introduce this last year. Um, We have a building fund that I rarely ever have talked about. Um, It actually has over $600,000 in it. Give God a little bit of glory for that, right? God is good. But most um, church books and guides would say, if you want to raise money for your building fund, you got to go out there and show the plot of land. You got to show the picture of the building and what it'll envision. You got to go spend all the money and you got to go put it out there and you got to tell everybody, give to this vision of this new glorious building. But I don't think Journey Church works that way. I don't think we should move faster than God has called us to move as a people, but I do believe He's also called us to continue to be debt free, right? I believe that's something that he wants us to do. But a building can be a constraint. So in the long run, I don't know if it's going to be this building. I don't know if it's going to be another building. I don't know if God's going to give us a building, which I'll pray for too. I'm believing that God will give us one one day. But our lease here ends in four years. Say four years. Four years. That means in my mind, we have three years to raise as much money as we possibly can to be positioned for wherever God wants to move us. Does that make sense to you? 
So we talked about Ramsey a couple years ago. We talked about being strategic. We talked about being conservative. So one of the lines that you'll see and that we're going to begin to talk about for a very short time, once a month, just so we keep it in our hearts and on our minds, is that we want to be debt-free in the future as well as today. We don't even want to have a lease when I'm saying that. We don't want to owe anybody anything at all. And then if we have money in the bank when three years comes and now we have an opportunity, you could go buy that opportunity, you could do whatever you want, and then you have a year to go get ready to move into whatever that next place is, be it here or somewhere else. I'd rather do it that slow, conservative way and save up and do right by God and right by God's people than put out some grand vision that we're going to go into debt for. If that works for you, hopefully that works for you, that works for me. Amen. So... As God puts it on your heart when you give, maybe you could go give a little bit to that building fund, maybe once a month, a small commitment, pray about that and see what God would have you do. I do realize we're long, second service, kids church, better be ready, come on Jesus. Um, I got two big things that I still want to share. The first one kicks off tomorrow. Um, we're going to enter into a 21 day season of prayer and for many of you I hope it's a season of prayer and fasting. Um, if you've got the 21-day prayer book that we gave out at the beginning, could you hold it up real high? If you didn't, or actually, if you got it, keep your hand down. If you want one, raise your hand, and Harold and Jim will go around and they'll bring you one. So we've, we've created these wonderful books. Um, thank you to all of the church staff and team that help us put those together. Um, the, these books have 21 days of guided prayer. Um, to give you a little bit of an idea, there's a table of contents in the beginning. There's 21 days. We're going to post it online as well as um, you have the physical copy of the book so you can follow along with us. And what we're asking is that you would pray with us for those 21 days over whatever that topic is for the day that day so that we could join in prayer. God's word says that his house shall be a house of prayer, right? It says that when two or more gather together, physically, virtually, it don't matter, that he hears our prayers, that he multiplies our prayers, and that whatever we ask in his name, he will answer according to his will. Amen? So we, what could happen if we all spent 21 days praying and seeking God's face over the same subject every day? I'm believing God wants to move in a special way. So I'm encouraging you to do that starting tomorrow. And for those of you who feel like you really want to supercharge it and go to the next level, the last couple pages talks about fasting, from things like a Daniel fast to um, a hardcore fast. So I would ask you that if you're attending these Thursday nights, please come fasted up, please come prayed up. Try to come on those nights spending at least 24 hours in prayer and fasting and then break your fast after that particular meeting, right? That's a great way to continue to build up. For some of you, maybe God will lead you to fast the entire 21 days. He may do that. Pray about it today. Ask him what he wants to do. Go as he leads, not just as you want. Go as he leads in your life. But I ask you to go deeper than you've ever gone before. So if you've gone times where you fasted one day, I want to encourage you to try to fast three days. Take it to the next level. Allow God to take you to the next level in your prayer and in your fasting and gather together with us on Thursday night throughout the month of January as we continue to pray for revival and seek God heartily in that area. For those of you on social media, those of you who are online, you can go to journeychurch.org slash 21 days. Or if you have the Journey Church app, you can open up the Journey Church app and there's a, a button there that will have the 21 days. So if you don't have the book with you, you can either download it digitally or you can also have it with you electronically on any of your smart devices wherever you go. Does that make sense? If you have any questions about that afterwards, feel free to come up and ask me. We are going to pray together like never before this year. We're going to learn how to pray, how to seek God's face. And that leads us to our final topic, which is our message series. What are we going to be studying during the course of this year? Um, we are going to really one-up it and go deeper than we ever have. Um, the war around us spiritually is more real and more evident than ever before, and we have probably done an injustice by not teaching about it more. So we're going to talk about things like in this coming month, one of my messages on the tree of life versus the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The devil and why he fell and what role he plays in creating this war that we find ourselves in. And then what is his strategies and how does the devil organize himself through demonic powers and principalities to keep us down and keep us from being able to fulfill our destinies and calling in Jesus Christ? How do we pray? How do we battle the enemy? How do we confound the enemy? How do we bind the enemy? How do we loose things here on earth that need to be loosed and release things that have to be released so that the kingdom of God could be advanced in our generation? 
We're going to talk about demons and how to deliver people from demons and what does it mean to uh, see someone get healed and how do we pray for people with healing. We've got all kinds of very deep topics that we're going to go into throughout the course of the entire year. This is no fun year. This is a year where we as saints are going from basic training to advanced infantry training. We're taking it to the next level. We're going to go deep on these subjects so that we know how to fight the fight that we're in. Amen? So I know this sounds crazy to say, but let me read this for you first. Matthew eleven twelve. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. We have to learn how to cast out demons. We have to pray and see people get healed. We have to see people get saved. We have to continue to reach out and help the hurting and the needy. These are all things that we need to do. And I'm telling you, we're not here to play church this year. We're not here to play church this year. If that's the kind of church you're looking for, I'm telling you, Journey's not going to be the church for you. I don't care if half the people end up leaving. I'm here to tell you that this is going to be a battle year spiritually for us. Not that we're going to get whooped. We're going to take some ground. We're going to do some whooping, right? We're going to do some putting the whooping on, right? But we need to get ready. We need to be spiritually fit. And, and if you're ready to dive in and you're ready to learn about those things and you're ready to take your faith to the next level and you want to see the power and presence of the Holy Spirit released in your life and in the life of the church and in your family, then this is the year for you. So that's where we're going this year in Jesus' name. And sorry, I went super long, so let me pray. Father, we thank you and praise you. Um, I pray that you've used this morning to either affirm or reaffirm in some people's heart where we have to go during the course of this next year and maybe remind them or open their eyes to the nature of the real battle that is in front of us spiritually. So Lord, as we leave this place today, would you prepare our hearts for this 21-day season of prayer? Would you knit us together? Would we be a people who demonstrate unity to the community around us? Would we be a people who share your love with everyone that we have the opportunity to do? Would we see breakthroughs this year? Would we see people get saved this year? Would we see revival this year? Lord, we speak it right now in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day.